I'm Brian Cannon, this is Microdot, welcome back. Today I'm going to share with you an interview that I did with Owen Morris last year. I say interview, it's more of a chat between me and Owen over a Zoom call uh, from his house in Costa Rica where he now lives. Uh, and I say more of a chat because we're all mates and I think you can tell that that comes across in the film. Owen obviously produced the first three Oasis albums and all the singles off of them. And really, in fact, everything that Oasis released in the 90s, so the glory days, really. And I don't think you can overemphasise just how important Owen was to the project because before he got involved, it just sounded flat. I mean, the Oasis sound that we know today from that era was, was pretty much down to Owen, really. The initial reason I conducted this uh, conversation with Owen was to get some sound bites from him for the video that I did for the artwork of Some Might Say. But when I watched it all back, I thought, it's just too interesting not to show it all. And in fact, I'd, I interviewed him twice over two different sessions. That's why you'll see the film skips a bit between two different camera settings. But um, yeah, it's Owen's take on how he recorded and demoed, some might say. And I think you'll find of interest, well, I think you'll find most of it of interest, but specifically little things like how Oasis worked. You know, it was nothing like as chaotic as you'd imagine. It was very structured to the fact where it was almost like a nine to five, five day a week job and they had the weekends off. Noel Gallagher once described to me Owen Morris' laugh as being debilitating. Now, I've never heard anybody's laugh as being debilitating, but I think you'll get it when you see this. So, without further ado, me and Owen having a chat. <laughs> I try not to swear. <laughs> <laughs> Genius. Oh, man, anyway. Right? <laughs> He's an old Gallagher. <laughs> I'll try my best, Brian, I promise. Good lad. Right. Right, right then. Uh, live from Costa Rica to the Lake District, here he is, the one and only Owen Morris. How are you, Owen? Every couple of years, we have the opportunity to say hello again, yes. and I always enjoy it. I yeah, love it. Me too, mate. Very much so. Very much. In fact, the last time I saw you, you were in this house. You were in the lakes. We met here. Supersonic premiere, possibly. Right. Fair enough. Well, that, that was about the same time. But they were like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> and funny that now, because I was convinced you did the, the cover afterwards, but now it makes sense because you seem to know more about the fucking song than I did. Right? <laughs> and... <laughs> no wrote the lyrics down for me after a gig in Southampton the previous year. So this has been going right. on a while, this artwork saga, for this particular record. It's all, yeah, it's yeah. all about the lyrics, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the yeah. He, yeah. Wrote the, he wrote the lyrics out for me in the tour bus. I, I say tour bus, it's more of a van, really, uh, outside of the gig in Southampton the previous year. Um, and basically said to me that he wanted all the lyrics of the song illustrated in one image. Hence the fishes in, in the fucking... Exactly. I, I'm going to go is through it your father? Is it, it is. your father pushing the sink? Yes, 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 of course. Which he, made himself, which he made himself as well. So incredible. With, with the, the wheelbarrow sink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, so fucking beautiful, man. I'm crying out. Yeah, I know. He passed away this year, actually. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was going to ask how you fucking folks are. <laughs> no, well, they're both dead. Oh, is I'm it? Sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yes, yeah, okay. there we are. That's heavy. But but I anyway. So anyway, so back to but, but his walk, back to... his walk with his wheelbarrow, with yeah. his wellies. Yes, yeah, the wellies. You remember the wellies? Anyway, uh, back to the recording session. So starting. Uh, and, and you and you were there for quite a lot of it. I seem to remember. I wasn't there for. I, the had, I had very happy. I have very happy memories memories of you being in the studio, Brian, while I was working with Oasis and the Verve. But mostly Oasis, you were there a lot. Yes, I was. Uh, <laughs> purely, purely for the purposes of research, obviously. Oh, a lot of research, i got to be honest. But, you put your uh, heart and soul into it, Brian. But, to be fair, you know, not anybody could just rock up. You know, they, they, this had to be approved by the band, so they were working. Oh, uh, yeah, no, no, like, you you were one of the very few people who the band were happy having around while they were recording. Was it maybe, like, Tim Abbott was the only other one? But he was only there in Once in a Blue Moon, you know? Oh. So you and Tim, hi. Um, so yeah, so starting off with the, the demoing, of some might say, what was all that about? Right, okay, yes, I remember this. Um, I think I remember this. It was when we were recording whatever. So this will be the summer, like June, July of 94. So before, definitely maybe it'd been released, which yeah. came out in August, yeah? Mm -hmm. And, hold on. Hide my freaking phone. One second. 
Sorry, I'll just put it in my bag there. Sorry right. about that. Go on. Um, right, um, so we were recording whatever at uh, Maison Rouge, Chelsea studio, where we did a few odds and ends. Yeah. And we also did, we also recorded Listen Up, Fade Away, Head Shrinker on that little session. It's like a week session. Mm -hmm. Good session, man. Ooh, that was an exciting session. Um, so, so and, and right at the death, Noel, because the band was set up, he said, I've got this too. New song, some might say, it's going to be the first, sing like whatever was going to be the Christmas single. Obviously, right? Um, obviously. <laughs> and Noel had it all mapped out. Hmm. And then three months later, or whenever, you know, whenever it came out, it came out like April or something like that, didn't it? Hmm. Some, some might say, something like that. Um, this was going to be that the song. So, demo it. Liam wasn't around. Taught the band it, you know, Bonehead and Griggs, uh, Tony McCarroll then, and uh, put a version down with Noel singing, kind vocal. So, without the lyrics, he had the full song. It was this sort of slow, stonesy thing. So, it was knocking around from then, because I think. Obviously, you'd have heard it at some yeah, stage. I, mean, yeah. I, I wouldn't contemplate doing artwork for a record that I'd never heard. And we did, we did the sleeve before the final recording. So this would must have been... Oh, I, you mentioned that to me. So, and I was like, we really? We shot, it, we shot it in January. We shot it in January. Right, because it's that's one of, that's one of the main sleeves you did where it's all based on the lyrics, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Is it, uh, so that was the, the demo done. So the demo was done during the recording sessions for the whatever and its B-sides. Yeah, whatever plus the B-sides, which I think, like, Listen Up and Fade Away, were they on something like the Live Forever single? Something like that? Because the what, whatever had Good To Be Free on, which right. we recorded Austin, my, Texas. That's another my Oasis. My favourite Oasis song. Good to be free. Yeah. Good song. It's amazing. It's right amazing. Uh, amazing. Oof, angry man, Noel Gallagher at the oh, time. It's incredible. incredible. Band. So it gets me every time I hear it. Still in uh, 2021. It, uh, it falls me every time I hear that record. It's amazing. Yeah. Good band. Liam Gallagher. Yeah, outrageous. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then we go, I suppose we move on to the actual recording sessions. Then. What can you tell us about that? Right, so my memory is, uh, so I've been recording at Loco Studios near Newport in South Wales, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I've been recording there like November, December, January with The Verve doing Northern Soul. You'd have been down a few times. <laughs> you, do you remember going to Abbey Road near the end? Anyway, right? Amazing times with The Verve. Intense. Oof. Um, and then I think I recorded Pusher Man straight after at Loco again. Yeah, yeah. So it was kind of my place. Yeah, yeah I was and, there at that session as well. I was there at the Pusher Man. You know, Pusher Man, you know, Andy Frank and Martin. Yeah, yeah. Good boys. Nice men. Yank. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Anyway. Oh. Beautiful. Um, so I, I, I guess I just stayed there, me personally. Yeah. And Oasis, I probably had like four days off from touring or whatever they were doing. And they came in and recorded, some might say, well, they recorded two songs on that session. First one was Acquiesce, yeah. which Noel says he wrote on the train when it, it got stuck for an hour under the under the River Seven, yeah. right? On the way from London to Newport. Uh -huh. Got stuck and, you know, stopped yeah. for some reason. He writes acquiesce. Of course he does, right? <laughs> He's an old Gallagher. <laughs> he comes in and uh, all excited about it because we, we we're all new, some might say. But it was Tony McCarroll's last session as well. Yeah. As a by the by, I really like Tony. I loved his drumming. Oh, yeah. um, but, you know, Noel didn't think he was going to be right for what was going to become Morning Glory, songs like Champagne Supernova and... And there was other personal reasons, but that, that's nothing to do with me. I, I enjoyed recording Tony, and I thought those records were fantastic. Yeah. Um, yep, so we did acquiesce very quickly, like in a day, you know, how they were. And then 
some might say. Now, my memory of doing some might say is that we fucked it up. We recorded it twice on that session. You know, set it up properly, all this daytime. Spent time in it, getting a, a few takes, you know, band playing well. And then listening back in the night, just me and Noel, the rest of the band have gone to the house, watching TV, you know, watching what, football or whatever. And we haven't listened to the original demo because we like the original demo. And the original demo was a lot slower, sort of stonesy vibe. And this new one was like, you know, a lot faster. So we thought, oh, bugger, we better get the band up to record it again, slower. Mm. No one's like, get up here, telling them in his own way. They get out of bed, come up. One take, no one's like, kicks off. And we're like, that's brilliant. Job done. Next morning, I'd listen, it was faster, right? <laughs> <laughs> than the one we thought was too fast. But Liam bowls in, like half 10 in the morning, Liam Gallagher, right? I want to sing on that, that's genius. And then, okay, can't stop Liam. Gets up, he sings it three times. Slams it, Brian, you know? So I, I comp the vocal then by midday, lead vocals done. Marcus Russell walks in, dude, that's amazing. Best thing I've ever heard him do. So that's it. That version, which is wrong, becomes the, the version that's on the album, that's the single. But as with a lot of things with Oasis, it's because Liam's vocal. He just slams it, delivers the song. And it's a great song, Brian. You know? Oh, it's a fantastic this. song. I, I love that song. I seem to remember waking up in the control room, though, and you putting the finishing touches to it. Does, does that remember? Yeah, well, 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 I guess you must have turned up. Around then, around when Marcus was there, probably, yeah? So I don't think you were there for the recording of Acquiesce, but you, you'd you heard it, right? Or you heard it on the session. And I, because we wouldn't have taken long once Liam had recorded his singing for Noel to finish the, his guitars. Probably done that day, yeah? So I probably had like two spare days in the studio. And I thought, well, I'll try mixing it now. And you would have been there then. So, no, so I remember you being there 24 hours a day. <laughs> like for the last two days. I, 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 have a, I have a specific image of you on the settee at the back of Loco, like yeah. six in the morning, tabs, beer. This is fantastic. Revolutionary. Revolutionary. It was, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Ah, it was. And me and you listened to some might say like 20 times, then acquiesce. Yeah. Then some might say, a good. The first people ever to hear it. Hi. Right. Yeah. Now, I think I. I think I might have mixed it again. I think I, yeah, I got a feeling I mixed it again. Uh, I, th I think I mixed it twice. I went up to London, mixed it. We thought, it, me and Marcus thought it was great. Noel heard it, one of the guitars turned up. And I, I was so confident at the time, I didn't do a recall. So I had to go back. I went back to Logo by myself one night, did a quick mix. It probably got worse every time, to be honest, Brian, but you know, <laughs> but it's fantastic. Yeah. They would just, you know, turn Liam up, yeah. off you go. Yeah. <laughs> Genius. I loved Oasis. It was good to record Oasis. Yeah. And we had a great time on those sessions. We certainly and, did. Uh, we certainly did. Yeah. So, God, it, that's mad to think that, isn't it? That, that some might say it was demoed in July of 1994. Him knowing it's going to be the first single off the fucking Morning time. Glory. Yeah, incredible. Right. And... So its recording then was quite close to its release then, wasn't it? Because when did it come out? It came out in the April, was it? No. Oh, April. it was really fucking close. It was really fucking close. We had a, well, Acquiesce was a fucking B-side, wasn't it? And I can't remember what else. I think there might have been, but yeah, it was really fucking close. It was down to the wire because I didn't master it. I went to Abbey Road because I didn't have time. So I was doing other fuck. I can't remember what the fuck. Um, but it was one of the closest releases because then we went in to do fucking Morning Glory at the beginning of May. And then Roll With It came out in like fucking end of August or so. August? Some shit like that. So it was every three months. So, you know. <laughs> it was full on, wasn't it? It really was. Ah. A lot of people watching this will, all, will be, have been sucked in by the myth that it was all aggravation and falling out and fighting 
and getting hammered was all eyes I remember. It was it just being a laugh and everything yeah, really and, 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 and the everything sessions, was well, the sessions were work. It, it, it was sessions were work. It was 11 in the morning. Yeah. Like I say, Liam would want to fucking sing at 11 yeah. in the morning, yeah. you know, and be singing 100%. And we'd finish at 11 at night. I'd probably stay up another few hours. I'm going to listen. With me. And I'm going to smoke and just thinking. Yeah, with you. <laughs> Dude, this is fucking great. What do you think, Brian? Oh, this is not fucking bad. Oh, it's revolutionary. Like, um, <laughs> right. But it was great fun. But we worked as well. Yeah, that's that was okay. the thing. It was like it, it was it was like Monday to Friday, yeah. then the weekend off. Everyone would fuck off yeah. on a Friday afternoon. Yeah, I mean, because so, I say this to people all the time who come into the shop, you know, that they're always like, oh, I bet it was May and money. I said, Well, look, you've got to bear in mind that they, they put they were incredibly prolific in terms of recording and gigging and all the rest of it in promotion and you couldn't possibly have done that body of work where you're off your nut all your time or fighting and falling out it just it just isn't possible no impossible i mean the brothers had on the sessions i did there was that one fight on fucking morning glory yeah yeah, yeah. after we'd recorded half the album in a fucking week yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. and they had a fucking barney and that's the only one I ever fucking saw. Exactly. You know? I, mean, I saw Fallout in Los Angeles. Ah. I was there that time as well. But, um, <clears throat> yeah. So it, those were rare and they were big and they were a bit of like a, a reset, weren't they? Yeah, exactly. Like, in fact, I was, everyone I was, getting I was, shit together. Yeah, exactly. I was, I was, uh, but it, I remember it just being a laugh and just very, a very creative time and a very productive time and everybody just enjoying themselves, really. Aye. Right. Good time to be young and alive. Yeah. Handy to be working with the best band, you know, yeah. around. Yeah, that yeah. helped. Yeah, yeah, it was but great. We also, you know, working with the Verve was yeah. <laughs> insanely productive. Yeah, it was astonishing different. times. Astonishing times. Yeah. So there you have it, Owen Morris on the recording of Some Might Say. I'll be doing more interviews with Owen on all the other records that he worked on for Oasis and, and other stuff as well, because he did uh, Northern Soul for the Verve and 1977 for Ash, so he's, he's got tons of stories. Uh, so if you like that video, as always, please like it, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends, all the rest of it, and I'll be back with a new video soon. Next one's going to be about the uh, Gibson Florentine Sparkle custom guitar of Noel Gallagher's that I've done uh, a limited edition print of, and that'll be coming out soon. So that, that should be screened in a couple of weeks. So once again, thanks for all your interest. It means the world. Ta-da.